Hey everybody, Julie Ebersol for EllenHudson.com. Welcome to Hello Monday. We're celebrating pets this week. And even though I don't have a cat, I'm going to be using this really fun stamp set by Flora Wicott for waffle flower stamps. And I'm also going to be focusing on the Pantone color of the year, which is ultraviolet. Now to get started, I've got my Misty, this is the original Misty, open, and I've got a scrap of watercolor paper that I'm going to anchor down there with the magnet and grab the sentiment that I want to work with from the set and get that lined up there over that piece of watercolor paper where I want it to appear. Go ahead and close the lid and then I'm going to grab another piece of cardstock, which is some Nina Solar White 110 pound and get that anchored in with a magnet and grab one of the kitties from the stamp set. And they're all so cute. I but I decided to go with this one for, well, you'll see when I get to the end why. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get that mounted by closing the lid of my Misty. And then I'm going to be working with VersaFine Onyx Black Ink. I'm going to go ahead and ink up. Unfortunately, I didn't realize that the lid of the Misty is off camera, but that's what I'm doing there is inking up both stamps. And I'm going to stamp both of these pieces at the same time. So I'm going to head, uh, close the lid and then take a rag. This is one of those tricks I learned from Carissa Wiley is to take something like a rag or she uses her shirt sleeve but <laughs> I had that rag handy so I just grabbed it and I'm just going to rub it over the top and I did not get as uh, even an impression as I wanted so no problem I'm just going to re-ink the stamps again and then close that over the top and then when I open the lid I'm going to have a really nice crisp impression and the black color is going to be very deep and rich so now I'm going to grab my heat gun and go ahead and speed heat set this even though it's a faster drying pigment ink I want to do some watercolor and I'm going to be working with the Zig Art Graphic Twin markers and I've got an acrylic block that I've set down on a piece of scrap white paper so I can see the colors that I'm going to be working with I'm just scribbling those there and making a little paint palette and I got these colors by working with uh, this color of glittery washi tape that has these rainbow stripes in it and it does feature that ultraviolet color so that helped me pull the colors together and I have a really hard time time working with purple. I don't know why, but I just do. So it really helps me to find things that have colors put together with purple already for me. So I don't have to think too hard about it and make my brain hurt. So <laughs> I'm just picking up the colors here with my water brush off my little palette that I've made on the acrylic block and just swiping it over the top of that greeting. And because it is a dry pigment ink, um, it's going to resist the water. It's not going to bleed out and ruin my watercolor painting here. So I'm just going to quickly just swash that back and forth. And I guess you could call it an ombre effect, but it's not really ombre. It's more like kind of a purple rainbow sort of thing. So now I'm going to take uh, my scissors. I'm going to trim that off. It's all dry and make a straight edge at the bottom. And then I wanted to have one of those fishtail banners for this. And this sentiment is going to get mounted vertically. So I cut a little slit right in the middle of that uh, piece of watercolor paper. And then I'm going to meet it at an angle from the outer edges uh, with my scissors and that's how that's just an easy way to get a banner a fishtail banner so now I'm going to trim out my cat my cat's all dry now and I'm using my uh, EK success scissors these are my favorite for when I need to fussy cut and I've got the jaws open pretty wide and I've got my paper seated towards the back of those blades and I'm just basically rotating the paper sometimes I kind of rotate both the paper and the scissors to get the angle that I need to cut in really tight and I'm going a little bit slow um some people can do this really fast but <laughs> I have to take my time or I get sloppy and so I'm just going to kind of go around the edges here and get that all trimmed out Now in this instance, I didn't happen to own the die for this stamp set, so I fussy cut it out, but I did want to share a tip if you're hand cutting things. You can take an emery board when you're done, and if you have any rough edges, just run that around and just file those rough edges down. You'll have a really nice, clean cut. Now I'm going to finish the card by uh, taking my base card here, which is 110 pound Nina Solar White. And I've got my little watercolored banner here. I've got some of this really cute rainbow striped uh, washi tape that's got glitter all over the front of it so it's very sparkly and I wanted to create the same kind of banner end so I'm going to do the fishtail thing again I'm just going to trim a little slit up the middle of that gl uh, glitter tape and then I'm just going to angle my scissors in from the outside edges to the top of that little slit and I've got a perfect fishtail banner. So now I'm going to take that and wrap that 
around the front of my card and figure out just how much length I really need for this. And I'm going to grab the banner too to make sure that everything's kind of the length that I want on this layout. So I'll trim off there a little bit of excess that's going to get folded over to the back side and get my washi tape mounted in place. This stuff is so cool. I love how thin it is and how it adds an extra element of pattern but it's got glitter all over it so it's really shiny and sparkly so that's fun and then i'm going to take some of this embroidery floss and coil that up around my fingertips i wanted to make a ball of yarn sort of kind of thing so i'm going to go ahead and figure out where i want that at the top and then i'm going to use my tiny attacher tool to staple it all together right through the card front it doesn't bother me if the staples show through the back side of the card and then I'm going to take my kitty and figure out where my kitty's going. So I wanted my kitty to be all tangled up in yarn, kind of like, you know, when you're playing with your cat. I play with my aunt's cat when I go house sit at her condo. <laughs> I don't have a cat myself. But anyway, that cat loves to play. And I love taking things and letting the cat chase them around the house. And um, she does get kind of tangled up in things if you let her, you know, run loose. So now I'm going to take a piece of cellophane tape once I've got my cat all, you know, tangled up in the twine the way I want and go ahead and anchor that down with a piece of scotch tape and then trim off that excess there. And then I'm going to use some foam mounting tape to 3D mount the cat um, and give some pop up dimension here on the card. So we'll get that mounted into place. I also wanted to add some of these really fun sequins by Pretty Pink Posh, but the front of my card is going to pop up on me when I'm trying to work. So to anchor it down, I just took a piece of washi tape and coiled it around my fingers and put it on the inside to tack the front of the card down to the back of the card. And then I can go ahead and take my on point glue and my little uh, jewel picker tool to grab those sequins and get them glued in place. I thought my kitty card turned out pretty doggone cute. We have more still shots available over at the classroom blog. All the supplies are available at ellenhudson.com and you'll also find them listed down below with links in the description box. If you enjoyed this video, please show us some love by giving us a thumbs up. You can see more of our paper craft videos by clicking on the photos below and we sure do hope you'll subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.